In a world of change, we're always going to experience some amount of threat awareness. Threat awareness comes because maybe a competitor comes out with a new product and we have to keep up, or maybe we've failed at a project and it's gotten off track, or maybe we've been successful, so now our boss puts us on a bigger stage with bigger competition. So what happens when we reach threat awareness? It is inevitable human response to feel some amount of anxiety. Anxiety tells us that some action has to be taken and something is not right with the world. We must respond. Without anxiety, we would never respond to threats. We'd never get out of bed. And what that does in the brain is it leads to something called cortical arousal. Cortical arousal gives you adrenaline and cortisol, and it does some interesting things because it was evolved on the African savanna 100,000 years ago to deal with threats. It narrows our peripheral vision. It stops our digestion. It makes us act as quickly as possible. Cortical arousal and per creative performance kind of move up together for a certain amount of time. But once you get too much cortical arousal, something happens. Because if a lion jumps out at you, you're not programmed to sit at a whiteboard and come up with 15 ideas about how to get away. You're programmed just to do the most obvious thing, which is to run. And so, with too much cortical arousal, safe thinking becomes inevitable. So pressure and anxiety leads to cortical arousal, which leads us to take stereotypical action, which in a world of change just creates more threat awareness, and we get stuck. So if you've ever been in one of those situations where the whole team knows you need to do something different and promises this time we're going to do something different, and then you wind up doing the same thing, it's because your brain is programmed to work this way. What can we do about it? Well, what Gandhi did was he didn't say, I'm going to break this cycle by never feeling anxiety again. What he said, and which now psychologists understand to be the only way to break this cycle, is he said, I'm going to notice that anxiety and move toward it. It's called reframing. Studies show that if you tell people not to feel an intense emotion, they're going to feel it even more. Studies show that if someone says, don't feel pain, and then dips your hand in cold water, you're going to feel twice as much pain as if you just notice the pain and let it pass. Same with anxiety. What Gandhi did was he reframed anxiety as fuel for creativity. And I think as leaders, we don't allow ourselves and our team to talk about anxiety and to notice it enough. And to notice that in those moments where we feel it most are actually the moments where change becomes possible. If we have ideas that aren't big enough to make us nervous, we never have ideas that are big enough to change the world. And so there's a really easy way to activate this information to, to change how we, we work with our teams. Ask ourselves some simple questions. When we get into a situation when we know we need to behave differently, these three questions have been studied and proven to really change the actions we take. So your team is sitting there, dealing with threat, everyone's feeling anxious, that's okay. Talk about your own anxiety. And then, before you make a choice, ask, what's a compelling course of action that frightens us? How deeply can we address this problem, as opposed to addressing it on the surface? And what might we do here that we've never done before? Now, I'm not saying that every time you get into a difficult situation, you've got to do the craziest and stupidest thing you could possibly come up with. But I'm saying if you never ask these questions, and you never scare yourself with the directions you're going, you're likely thinking too safely. And if the world is changing around you, that kind of safe thinking will eventually lead to less than optimal creative performance.